we feel your finesse, curiosity and lightheartedness in your music. How would you describe yourself? Well, I guess um, I would describe myself. No one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> I, would I would describe myself as someone who is, who is curious, Musically, I'm very interested in a lot of different styles of music, and I really like the freedom that jazz gives to music and gives to people, and I would say that I'm probably quite um, open, open-minded to different influences and different styles of music as well. That's what I thought when I listened to your music and the title of your debut album, Freedom Flight, is indeed a statement about jazz and art in general. So this open-minded, sincere approach that you said about the uplifting music that gives you wings. So what would make you happy to inspire the listener for with your music? I want the listener to feel something. I want them to hear the music and to feel relaxed or to feel happy or to feel a, a sense of joy because I think there's so much music in the world today and there are so many sounds and we're always seeing things and hearing things and tasting things and so it can be too much. It can be really overwhelming but I'd like my music to to make people feel calm and to maybe just give them a moment where they can go on a journey and just go somewhere different to their normal life and then come back. Yeah, I want people just to feel something, anything, when they hear it. And this would be an approach to find our place in space and time, as is the title of your second album, because it's a part of our human nature to feel lost in space and time. But we have this opportunity to find ourselves and that often happens with art and music. What do you think about the possibility of this, about us really knowing why we are here and where we are? Wow, that's an amazing question. And that's, it's, it's quite... Um It's quite a profound question. I don't know. I think it's so... We live in such an interesting time and there's so many amazing things about the world that we live in and there's so many awful things about the world that we live in, like war and environmentally everything that's happening. Um, I think that's quite... A, it's quite a personal thing. I think for every, everybody it's different and people find space and, and time and the ability to reflect in different things. For some people, like me and perhaps you, we find that, that relief in music. Other people might find that relief by, I don't know, going outside and being around nature or, you know, I think it's very personal. It's different for everyone. I, I wouldn't know how to answer that for everyone. That album, Space and Time, it's an album, voice and piano, in fact, three different pianos, and one of yeah. them is Gerald Clayton, one of the pianists you work with. How did this meeting for music happen? And what are your impressions of Gerald Clayton as an artist? Well, um, I knew Gerald's work with a lot of people, uh, with his own trio and also the accompanying he'd done with Gretchen Pilato who is a singer that I, I really love and has been very inspiring to me. So I knew I knew what a wonderful player he was, and I just wanted to get the chance to, to work with him and collaborate with him. And this was a good time to do it because it was just voice and piano, and so you can really focus in on sharing musical ideas. And he was wonderful to work with because he's such an amazing musician, and he's so musical, and he's really thoughtful, and makes beautiful musical choices. Um, so working with him on recording the album was absolutely joyous and easy, so easy. And I loved what he did with the music, with my music and with the arrangements and how he put his own stamp on those tunes. And then we performed afterwards. We did a CD release concert in New York and in Boston. And it was really, again, it was just, I learned so much playing with him 
um, because he's so experienced and he has so much knowledge under his belt. And um, he's a wonderful, wonderful person and musician to work with. So it was just a great experience. And one of your other piano partners is Shai Maestro, and he is not unknown to the Bulgarian audience as he was part of our festival, Sofia Just Peak. So it's very good to know that we have this connection. I love, love, love Shai Maestro, and I hope in the future to play with Shai. You mentioned some of your favorite artists, and you mentioned Gretchen Paolato, and... Mm. Um, I think of your very subtle way of singing. Is this a tendency in jazz music? Or is it your personal artistic aesthetics? I think I think it's very different, especially with singers, because I think that it's largely dependent on what kind of voice you have. And my singing voice isn't the same kind of voice as someone like Ella Fitzgerald or Betty Carter or now in modern days, you know, Diane Reeves um, or even Cassandra Wilson. I don't have a very big, booming um, voice. My voice is, it's naturally, it's a soprano, soprano voice, so it's quite, it's higher And um, I can't really belt, so I can't get that sort of, I guess, loudness. So I, I think that I, I need to, I try to just find ways to do certain things with the instrument that I've been given. And so in some ways, I guess it's similar. Gretchen's, Gretchen's singing voice is also, it's, I mean, her voice is a lot quieter. It means that she has to do different things with it than if she had a voice like Sarah Vaughan or, you know, it's, it's, basically just working with what you've been given. But I also think that it's a conscious choice, that I'm more interested in, or I'm very interested in, what are the important things about the song? And for me, those are the lyrics and the story and really conveying those. And I think that if, as singers, if we get too loud or we do too many sort of fancy pyrotechnics and vocal acrobatics, I think it can take away, it can detract from the point of the song and the point of the music. And so people won't necessarily feel something. They may be impressed and they'll think, wow, she can sing and scat and improvise really fast. And, and that's great, but it doesn't necessarily make the same impact as if you just say something very simply and maybe a bit softer And they walk away thinking, oh, wow, I never realized that that song was actually about that. Or, you know, I didn't realize that I could be affected by that song in that way. It's so sad or it's so happy or it's so loving. So um, I do think it's, it's partly this is the instrument I have and this is what I can do with it and this is what it can do. And so I'm going to work with it to the best of my ability. And then the other part of it is... I don't want to make a lot of sound. I want to make sound that counts. And then, what can you add to this description of your artistic approach so that you make these very unusual, very explorative interpretations of songs and melodies, some of them that we very well know? I mean, the mm. jazz standards that you present every now and then. Well, I think... If there's a standard that I like, a song by Gershwin or Cole Porter or Irving Berlin, if it's a song that I like, then I'll sing it. I don't like to sing anything for any other reason. I have to love the song. And very often, as on Space and Time, there were a lot of standards that I thought had never been recorded slow enough. I mean, one of the songs is Say It Isn't So by Irving Berlin. And it's such a sad song. And if you just read the lyrics without the music, you realize how heart-wrenching that song is. And so I think that it needs to be really slow to convey that message. It's desperately sad. And so the way I interpret it then is by really slowing it down And then in that context, it's just voice and piano. So it's going to be very sparse. Um, and it's the same thing with the other standards on that album, I Wish You Love. And
and Someone to Watch Over Me by George and Ira Gershwin. It was a case of hearing these songs on other people's albums and thinking that they weren't slow enough to really match the story in the song. Um, so that's generally how I, how I interpret something. I really just look at the lyrics first and decide whether I can relate to the lyrics and the story, and then that helps me interpret it and, and rearrange it. Um, but I also, I mean, I love rearranging music. I think it's really fun. So that's also another reason why I do it and interpret things differently to someone else, perhaps. When I listen to your songs, I have the feeling that music really flows. So how does it happen the way you work with all the other musicians, those pulsations that you can really feel in the music, enjoying the moment, exploring the moment, feeling the moment? I think it's because I'm lucky that I get to work with such wonderful musicians. And I think it's very important, especially in New York, there are so many musicians and they're all amazing but that doesn't mean that they're going to interpret your music in the best way so you have to be very careful about choosing the right people to work with people who like for me working with singers because there are some musicians who actually don't like working with singers and that's fine but then I you know I don't want to work with them because it's not going to be a fun experience so choosing people who like vocalists And then choosing people who personally like, like my music and it shares aesthetics with their sense of, of music and what it should be about. So I've been very lucky to find people, um, different people, who understand how I try to interpret songs. And then they can also, at the same time, they're able to put their own stamp on the music. Because I don't want them to just play what I've written. I want them to inject their personality and their skills and their knowledge into the music. Um, so it's kind of like it's a balancing act between them being happy and me being happy. And then if we're both happy, the music comes to life in the way that it should be. And then someone like you, someone who's listening, gets a sense that the music really flows and it feels very natural. So then it worked. One very important feature of your music is dedication. We talked about music as art, we talked about jazz standards, but we also can include here the ode to a folk song from a debut album and mm. also the title of your new EP, To the Spring. So how do you feel about dedication? Wow, what a great question. I think it's really that... that I don't think too much about it. It really, the fact that it's called Ode to a Folk Song is just because of the way that it was written. And in fact, I was visiting a friend in Norway, in Oslo, when I wrote Ode to a Folk Song, and I've been very affected by how important Norwegian folk music is to the people and musicians who live in Norway, and how beautiful it is and how interesting it is when it's incorporated into the jazz genre. So I was thinking about that and also the idea that folk music tends to be sometimes simpler than a lot of other music and that there's a beauty in that simplicity. And then to the spring, I guess, is, as you pointed out, it's an ode to spring. I just want to write about things other than love. I feel like a lot of original music is always about love and this boy broke my heart or, you know, this woman did whatever. And, and um, I like love songs, but I find it more challenging to try and write about other topics. Things like maybe the love between a father and a son or a, a, a father and a daughter, or to write about seasons, the seasons changing, because there's so many beautiful things that happen that there's imagery. And so you can really use lovely words in describing that. Or just to write about an image, which is what Ode to a Folk Song is. There's a house on a hill and it stands all alone and there's nothing for miles but pine trees and air. I had a, you know, almost as if I was looking at a painting and writing about it. Um, so I think that's how dedications for me come to be. 
based on trying to write about different things other than love. What is the next challenge in music that would draw upon your nature of being a brave explorer? Oh, that's very nice of you to say that. Um, I don't know if I'm a brave explorer. I'm always terrified. But the next thing is that I'm hoping to move to London um, later this year and to explore the music scene there and to hopefully visit Europe more because it'll be closer and um, just to carry on writing original music and to try and write good original music and to find different stories to write about in the songs and um, to play with, play with new musicians and reconnect with, with older other musicians. There's a wonderful drummer from Bulgaria who I think he just moved back called Borislav Petrov. Yes. Um, <laughs> we played together in South Africa, gosh, two years ago. And he was, I mean, I just, Bobby is just a wonderful person and an absolutely incredible musician and drummer. So, you know, hopefully I'll play with him again in the future. And so there's a lot of things I don't know, but a lot of things that I, I'm hopeful will happen.